All right, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody, to Problem Solver Politics. It is 7.07 on Sunday evening. We are live in the KHTS studio. I am your host, Cardinalis, with... Mark Murphy, attempting to maintain stability in the political conversation. And we've got... Failing. A- oh, sorry to interrupt you there, bro. <laughs> we, got, we got a great guest in studio today, all the way from New York City, coming to join us here in Los Angeles. He's a comedian, a scholar, a gentleman, and the curator and executive director of We the Internet TV, a hilarious political comedy YouTube channel that you must check out. His name is Lou Perez. Lou, how you doing, man? Thank you. I'm enjoying being a curator. Thank you. I, uh, you're enjoying- well, I got to tell you, you know, I'm a guy who's on the on the more righteous understanding, compassion side of politics, being a Democrat. And, and one of the things I've noticed with all this, I, I get most of my news from Trevor Noah and from, uh, you know, the deal, you know, John Stewart or, or if I was going to watch uh, Colbert. But I got to tell you, your stuff is smart. You got to kind of, you make us think you don't ask us to buy into what you say. It's funny. I loved it. And I just had one example after another where I went, you know, that's the smartest writing I've heard in a long time. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. And then one thing I would say to everyone is please do not get your news from me. <laughs> please. Please don't get any of your news from me. <laughs> so, well, well, it, actually, let's dive right into that because um, I, I have often said in many shows that we used to laugh at comedians and listen to politicians. Now we listen to comedians and we laugh at politicians. And Dave Chappelle is one of my all-time favorites in comedy. And he had a hilarious shtick where he talked about people interviewing Ricky Martin for uh, his opinion on the war in Iraq. And I can't even do his voice very well, but he was like, why are we asking him? He's not a social scientist. <laughs> you know, And it was... It was that was the most horrible Dave Chappelle interpretation you guys have ever seen in your I, life. I thought he right? was in the room. But right. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was it was really funny and and I value so much now what co- comedians think, especially comedians that are in the know politically and brave enough to venture into those topics because they really are the canaries in the coal mine. So, um I'm just curious what uh I, I love listening to comedians, but you did mention before the show that you're opposed to people getting their info from comedians. Is this a philosophical thing, or do you actually think you're just worse at it? Oh, I think I'm I'm definitely worse at it. <laughs> I, I I think I, I I think the way that I look at it is um, I'd much rather be funny than be right. Like if I, especially when it comes to entertainment. Uh, now, when I'm arguing with my wife, I want to be right. <laughs> and then the funny can you know can come after that, but I I think I think it's a real issue where, you know, obviously comedians have such a big reach nowadays, and I think ever since the days of of John Stewart on The Daily Show, people look to comedians, especially when it, when it comes to politics, for truth, you know, for speaking truth to power and all that. That I think that power can be corrupting and also fill your head with these ideas that, you, hey, you know what? I, I know that I got here because I was telling jokes, but now that I'm here. I'm going to start preaching. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what got me. It was the funniest thing you talked about. You talked about the controversy about when we were having this big argument that was going before the Supreme Court about the ability of a couple to have a, to have a bakery make their wedding cake. And that they demanded that they get it, even though they were gay, they demanded that this baker make the cake. You didn't go into the political side, right and left, whether this was good, bad, or indifferent. What you said you really just cracked me up when you pointed out the fact that would you want someone who didn't want to come to your wedding bake your cake for you to eat <laughs> at the wedding? To me, that was the logical point of this whole thing, but no one was pointing it out. Oh, I appreciate that. And then actually, at the time, I was preparing you know, uh, a wedding with my, with my wife and going through it, and you know, there were family members who were like, oh, man, we really, I know we have to invite them, but I hope they don't show up. You know, and, <laughs> and, and just sort of, and, and looking at it like, you know, every single facet of the wedding, you want everyone to be there to, 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 to you know, be coming and embracing you and spreading their love and all that. And, and honestly, like, the, the conversation about the Masterpiece Cake Shop case is a complicated conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a reason why you have all these amicus briefs, you know, being written by, by these, you know, scholars, these First Amendment scholars who are, who are who are coming to it. So I think having you know some humility when when approaching a, a topic that's so complex is really important, especially if you're trying to make fun of it, uh, mm-hmm. if you're trying to find humor in it. And look, I'm not an expert on it, but there's this little bit 
that really touched me, and I was like, oh, but this is something that I can relate to. Well, I liked it, too, because you were talking about a wedding, and, and I, my whole view on weddings changed when I watched to, went to Tony and Maria's wedding, the, the play that went around L, the United States for a long time. Went to it multiple times because I just enjoyed weddings after that. They were so much fun, and you were making fun of your own weddings, your own preparations, and you tied it into this smart political conversation. You weren't telling us how to choose a position. That was so refreshing. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And, and something that, that, that you'll learn when you get engaged is that you need to take engagement photos, and <laughs> you will take <laughs> so many photos with you and your partner's foreheads touching. <laughs> I, I was dating my wife for maybe like five years up until I, I don't think our foreheads ever touched. But this photographer was like, you got to make the foreheads touch because that's what love is. And it's like, oh, OK. Hey, if you're lucky, you know, I remember my wedding. What, what, what happens? But the paid photographer's film gets destroyed. This was the days when you used film. And just one of the friends of the family was just taking candid shots. Those candid shots were awesome. But it was funny because, of course, we forgot the maid of honor and a few other key people at certain times. I'm just happy to see you branching out and doing all this new media stuff, Mark. Okay. I mean, watching I the learned. interwebs? Uh, yeah, I know. Mean, it was wow. hard. I'm trying to figure out what this internet thing is. But, you know, I'll get there eventually. You know, yeah, we'll get there. Hey, so well, it's interesting you saw his cake video. I barely remember that one because that, that was a long time ago. Mine was. Funny that, to me. Yeah, the one that turned me on to um, Lou Perez and We the Internet TV was a hilarious video about the one I mentioned where it says, stop making me defend Donald Trump. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Talk about that one. Yeah. What, okay. what was the, what's the story? Okay, you wait. fire shots at the presidents in a way that, whether it was Obama or Trump, I just found cool because you, you don't bring us down the obvious trail. So take us what you did with Trump because well, it's different. I, I appreciate that. Well, I think you know, one thing, you know, sort of overall, rather than get into arguments about policy and all that, what I like is – the human element of how people are responding to politicians, how people are responding to politics in general. And with this one, uh, the idea came from uh, an actor that I work with, a really talented guy and a friend of mine named Gary Lee Mahmoud. And Gary was talking about how many It sounds like you've practiced that. Gary, like, I, I saw I, I, your, I owe him. I, I owe him. I, owe him I saw much. your <laughs> eyes go to like, they say if you like look left into the upper left, you're accessing a different part of your brain than an upper right. So I spent I saw a your, lot of time there. Yeah, I saw, I saw your your eyes change as you did this like linguistic Mahmoud. Mah well, I have it tattooed on my arm, <laughs> like, like yes, memento, so I, so I never forget. So it was like awesome. I was like, he just nailed that nailed pronunciation. It. Nailed yeah. it. It's like I have to be so careful because I have a Republican girlfriend now, and believe me, <laughs> I have to be careful. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so so we would um, so uh, he pitched this idea. He's like he's like you know I've had so many you know so many times it's happened where I I'll be you know on set or something like that, and I'll hear two people talking about Donald Trump, and they just have a detail off, like there's something that that they just got wrong, like a, and he's like and he puts him in a really weird position because he's like I don't like the president, I didn't vote for him, and uh I don't want to be the guy defending him, but you know what. I, I feel that it's the, for the record. Yeah, it's, it's for the like, record. Yeah. I feel the urge to be like, hey, you know what? He actually didn't say that. And more more often than not, people will turn around and be like, oh my god, are you a Donald? Are you a Trump supporter? Is that what's going on? Yeah. And he's like, no, I don't like him. I didn't vote for him. Wait, but I why are you defending our crazy, psychotic, pseudo scientific claims about him? It, it, exactly. <laughs> and and I think and I think Democrats can relate to that too. When you know during the eight years of, of Obama, would you would hear you know criticisms of him, and it'd, it'd be like, hey, look. W whether you're for the president or against him, like he didn't say that, you know, or you know, uh, you know, going after him because he put Dijon mustard on a hamburger, or <laughs> his feet. One one that I didn't like that was coming from the right wing was when there was this this day on Fox News where they were heavily criticizing the president for putting his feet up on the resolute desk, mm. and I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. If you're sitting there with the weight of the world on your shoulders, holding nukes, you know, like I'm sorry, the Cuban Missile Crisis, if JFK wants to kick his feet up on the Resolute yeah. desk and take a rest after having stopped the world 
from dissolving into a nuclear fissure, then I think it's okay if the dude that just won the elections kicks his feet up on the desk. Yeah, that was one that I thought You can't trust a president <laughs> who shows his forearms. You know, rolls yeah, up yeah, his yeah. He, he loosens his tie. Exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. he sneaks a smoke. I'm going, that's his vice? This is incredible. Well, and, well, and then even now, though, like, it, it blows my mind. We're – I'm seeing – I love – this is what I love about the Trump presidency probably more than anything else is that the fourth branch it's of government – boring. The, <laughs> <laughs> the fourth branch of government – I mean the, the, the founding fathers knew when they, they built this constitution and, and, and Jefferson and, and all of those, 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 those first – not interpreters but influencers of the constitution that really studied the crap out of everything that was available to One then. of the most – Unbusiness professional. Well, James Madison, slave holder. Yeah, yeah. I, I, lo- I loved him. Okay. Well, you know, James, James Madison, Madison could write. I'm from. I spent a lot of time in Virginia, so I know these. Okay. Dudes. Well, besides could write, I mean, he poured over every single book on political theory before suggesting what would end up becoming the structure of the Constitution. So this wasn't just by some happenstance that we ended up having the three branches of government. But anyway, of those three branches. He's well documented as being on the record saying there was a fourth unwritten branch of government that is the media that needs to, like you said before, hold truth to power. However, I have seen in my life that the media has gone from holding truth to power in a relatively bipartisan way or at least faking it to being just completely partisan and now having, for a good reason, a lower approval rating than even Congress itself. So every day that Donald Trump does not get bullied into exiting the Oval Office is a victory in my mind and a point on his scoreboard, all right? So that's that's something I completely dig about the media. I mean, sorry, about the Donald Trump presidency because as you said, like the right wing cons- um, criticizing Barack Obama for kicking his feet up on the Resolute desk, we have had to endure every stupid criticism of Melania Trump's heels, wearing heels, down to the hurricane place. Like, apparently that was disrespectful. Every criticism of every kid, of you Baron know. Trump, of everything that doesn't have to do with anything. Fashion is important. Yeah, but you can go to the plane in heels. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't plan on it, but I guess she <laughs> can if he really wants to. But you know what I'd love, though, is when you did, it, like, s- what you did with Obama and the Netflix show. He was, uh, he, you created this whole thing about he's got a series. And oh, I didn't see this one. And this was so cool because you were, you were throwing it out there like it was real news. It was real facts. And y- you put out the, the stats concerning the drone strikes, which are, fr- you know, troubling as it is, and the number of people that were killed and how this just was going on. And you throw those out there, real numbers, real Real facts, but you made it like, oh, you gotta forgive him. I mean, because everybody makes a first mistake, you know, just because he wipes out a wedding party. I love what you did. How did you come up with that? Oh, this um, was cool. Th- thank you. That 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 was a, uh, another writer named Brandon Basham, who <laughs> <laughs> who came up with that idea. Um, yeah. So Brandon ha- had this idea, and, and you know, just to give uh, context, at the time, uh, Netflix had. Uh, uh, signed Obama for some sort of deal where he would be producing a series or, or something like that. And obviously, as what's happening uh, in, in the media and in Hollywood in particular, the Me Too movement was on. And what we, what we started seeing were a lot of men who were being you know, fired or losing gigs because of past misconduct. So Brandon thought about, hey, well, hey, wouldn't it be funny if like we treated uh, Obama the same way except his past misdeeds were, you know, murdering innocent people <laughs> with drone strikes. <laughs> but Blowing up wedding parties. I thought the way you did that one was a very good one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank good you. stats. And <laughs> good, good stats. I got to see this one. I'm the one that subscribed to him first and reached out, and here you are, totally fanboying better than I can. I haven't seen this one yet. I got to uh, check I, this I'm out. I'm very familiar with these targeted strikes, so let's yeah. just move on. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, catch them all. You know, just, uh, just watch them all. There's something there for the whole family. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, uh, and and our argument was, hey, we need to, you know, uh, what what Obama did. He was young at the time. You know, we've all. I mean, who among us has not bombed a <laughs> wedding party in Yemen? I mean, come on, <laughs> we have to be able to forgive one another. And uh, yeah, so it was fun being able to play that, especially um, because you know I don't think anyone had taken that angle before. Mm-hmm. And 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 that's one of the fun, cool parts about doing political comedies when you're able to put out an original idea like that and be like, oh, let's see what happens. Oh my gosh! For those of you that are just tuning in, 
right now we are listening to a hilarious uh, would you call yourself just a comedian or a political comedian how would you self identify messiah <laughs> <laughs> Okay, he's a New Yorker. He can make claims like that. You okay, know? so we're uh, we're listening to a political messiah who also happens to go by his uh, heavily anglicized name, Lou Perez. All right, he's hilarious from We the Internet TV. Before we continue with this conversation, shameless plug: How do people follow you and tune in and see what we're talking about? Well, yeah, please uh, subscribe to We the Internet TV on YouTube. Like and follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Okay, great. So I got a question for you. How do you come up with all this stuff? How do – oh, man. What's uh, the creative process? Because first off, I mean, it's obvious from your content that you have multiple viewpoints in those that are writing and acting in your, in, in your videos. And talking about politics is, like, maybe worse than trying to talk about religion. You know what I'm saying? Um, so how do you get such successfully hilarious things? Like – What's the creative workflow? I can see the creative workflow for general comedy, like joking about dating or joking about um, X, Y, or Z humorous thing. But what's the workflow for political comedy? How do you get all this funny stuff online? Well, well, you know, we're definitely competing with a lot of people. We're competing with professional comedians who have shows and all that. And then we're also competing with uh, – Amateurs. Wait, are you not a professional? Did I call the eh, wrong guy? I don't know. Oh, jeez, yeah. man. We got to hold on. I got a, I got a new email. He's no. been <laughs> head writer or he's been writer in this show for five years. Yeah. I think he probably knows what he's doing. As far as I'm concerned, I'm always that eight-year-old kid on the mound <laughs> learning how to throw to my dad for the first time. Uh, but, but, you know, we're competing with a lot, you know, with, with a lot of people. So, you know, obviously you're dealing with, with inspiration, and now you, you're like, oh, he, I think I have an angle on, on this thing. And then you look, and ah, they already did it, you know. So, um, you know, so when I'm coming up with something, for one, it has to be, it has to be funny because we're doing comedy. And, and secondly, it has to be original. And right. sometimes um, I, I like to describe myself as where other people might be limited ideologically – I'm more limited by my imagination, you know. So if 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 you're like, wow, Lou, that that really stunk. It's like, yeah, well, this stupid brain is, you know, there's only so much this brain can do. What what of all of these? Oh gosh, man, we only got another sixty seconds before we got to go to break. But what what of all of these videos you've done are you most proud of? I'm curious because you have some hilarious content out there. Thank you. I think my favorite one might be ESL students learn new gender pronouns. <laughs> That might be my favorite. Oh, wait, Cody. Cody, there's no swear words in that, is there? Uh, no, I know. I think it's all. Oh, uh, we I, might I in the break were... have to find. Oh, I don't we remember. Gotta find it. We gotta find, I thought you were going to talk about the lawyer and the plumber. Oh, talking about ordering pizza. That was just, I was crying almost because oh, I that's got, awesome. my kids are, you know, being young adults and they're going through that transition of what's their job, what's their career. You hit all the nuances of what these kids are going through and pr choosing a career and the, the distinct funny and irony of it. I loved it. it okay, fun. so so hold on. In the commercial break, you have to listen to these commercials and you have to buy our sponsor stuff. This capitalist break is very, very important. It's how we pay for everything, people. But you can simultaneously look up with the Internet TV on your laptops so you're in the know as to what we are talking about and click that subscribe button because Lou Perez is freaking hilarious. He's in the studio. We're going to get back to him and his amazing body of work in the next little bit after this break. This is Problem Solver Politics. You choose your dry cleaner for convenience. Maybe it's time to choose a dry cleaner that is not only convenient, but does quality work at a reasonable price. Town Cleaners. They're in the center of our valley, and they offer free pickup and delivery anywhere in Santa Clarita. Town Cleaners, a dry cleaner who goes the extra step. Their stringent quality control ensures the highest quality cleaning and pressing for your garments. And now through February, save 50% on all dry cleaning orders. Town Cleaners on Soledad and Rainbow Glen. Kyle, guess what's coming up? It's the KHDS Home and Garden Show at Emergency Expo. April 27th and 28th at Central Park. 
free admission, mission, mission. Over one weekend, over 20,000 homeowners, Santa Clarita homeowners, visit this every single year. It's one of the biggest home shows in not just Southern California, but California. My favorite is the marketplace. It's local craft stuff. It's awesome. A lot of activities for the kids. They've got the petting zoo, pony rides. But if you want to be a part of this, there is always room for your business. That's true. And this is an opportunity that is like no other. You're going to get, like you just said, about 20,000 people over the weekend to come and check out your business. So there's still vendor opportunities available. That's the only question I have. If a vendor is listening right now and they say to themselves, that's what I want to be a part of, now what? You can call 298-1220, 298-1220, mm-hmm. or go to scvhomeshow.com. Everybody wants cheap airfare. But where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines. And they're so low, you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call right now. Operators are standing by. 1-800-452-1075. 800-452-1075. 800-452-1075. That's 1-800-452-1075. Your hometown station. As soon as I leave my house in Saugus, I always turn on KHTS for the latest traffic updates. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. We are live in the KHTS studio. I am your host, Cardinalis, with... Mark Murphy, maintaining stability of the political conversation and having a ball doing it. And we got a really hilarious gaffe. We, gaffe. Guest. We are... I don't even, dude, it is getting bad, man. It is getting bad. It's like my third gaffe today. Anyway, we are joined in the studio with Lou Perez, who is the curator, the executive director, executive producer, head writer, all these other really cool titles you can give yourself in hollywood of we the internet tv probably one of the funniest youtube channels uh doing political humor nowadays and this is smart humor this is not just you know the standard stuff from the headlines this is smart comprehensive thinking that makes you think about from the right and the left he nails it and unpredictable too this ain't normal trevor trevor noah and john stewart stuff this is unpredictable i actually had to ask him i had to ask lou just let me toot your horn here for a second I actually had to ask him before the show started, and I violated my own rule of not saving it for the show. I had to actually ask him what his political views were because I couldn't tell from his, yeah. I couldn't tell yeah. from his his yeah. body of art. I don't really want to know uh, because <laughs> it's more fun <laughs> just having you fire shots on both sides. But you weren't just firing shots. You're not looking for the short th- you're the short punch. You seem to be trying to get us to think, and you're not telling us what to think. I like that. That's well, smart. I, I appreciate it. No, I I'm, uh, I definitely want to entertain, and I want and I want to spark conversation too, because uh, a lot of the issues that that we take on, like I said before, you know, I'm not an expert on them. I just have this, you know, perhaps this quirky angle uh, angle to take it. That was my gif, uh, <laughs> right over there. Okay, one second. Well, I'm going to give you an example. Um, you went into this issue. So we have a little conversation about guns in the United States. I mean, uh, you know, I'm a fan that Second Amendment. Never mind. Um, so, uh, for a second, talking about this, you did something that was really funny. The s- seven things you need to consider before you have a conversation about guns. I loved it because you fired shots on both sides, and I, I was an NRA ins- uh, safety instructor, so I kind of got that concept of guns. So uh, it's it's sort of fun. So tell me how you did that, and uh, throw out a couple of the ones you did on that in terms of how you made people think. Sure. Well, I. Well, you know, we always 
we always hear that, you know, it's time to have a conversation on gun control. It's time to have a, a conversation on gun control. You keep hearing that. Which means if you start the conversation, they tell you why you're a bigot if you don't agree with them. I uh, hate that yeah. word. We yeah. want to have a com we want to start a conversation. That and the word raising awareness. Anything can be done in the in the name of raising awareness. So anyway, continue. I apologize. No, no, it's a, it's uh, it's okay. I, I think we've just raised some awareness right now. Uh, <laughs> for anything, I love this. Trump, you should not equate Trump with Hitler. Yeah. And it was the reason. If Hitler is in the White House, you do not want to be challenging that. <laughs> and I, I was born in Germany. I get that. So that was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, and um, and you know, going back to you know this idea of this conversation, uh, you know, what happens all the time is when people start talking about guns, it becomes pretty clear how much they either know about guns or don't know about guns. So I think in order to people, you know, to sort of, um, you know, uh, shorten that gap between people, he, th these were you know some things that you should know about uh, know about guns, and and one one of the things was. It's a little pet peeve of mine. I really hate the statement, we got to do something. <laughs> we have to do something. Aren't we, we what, why aren't we doing something? And the reality is, look, we're adults. We should expect more from one another than just this amorphous, nebulous something. Because for some people, do something, like I say in the video, means go out and buy more guns. You know, yeah. we got to do something. We got to go get uh, get more guns. What you, what'd you say? Everybody's uh, next to a gun. Uh, there's some. Oh, oh basically, like I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, there's there's over like 350 million guns in America. Chances are, your neighbor has a gun, or your neighbor is literally a gun. You know? <laughs> yeah, so just go over and you know ask if you can borrow some sugar from your gun neighbor. <laughs> Uh, but the other thing you brought up, though, is this whole idea of silencers. Uh, I, I got a kick out of that. So uh, you, when you're talking a little bit about this idea of, you know, a silencer is not quite as quite. You now, you're from New York where we have this propensity to kind of believe that you guys have the mob. I don't know why. Um, and, and that you, you know, you're very familiar with silencers. So kind of take a little, a little bit, uh, take us on a journey there. Well, well, apparently silencers are actually called suppressors. And, and what was fun about doing this video is that I got to learn more about guns, too. Um, you know, doing the research. And one of the things that I actually learned is that I, I got something wrong. I said that, oh, yeah, there's no, um, you know, uh, assault rifle doesn't have a definition. It's basically like a big scary gun. It's like, no, actually, assault rifle does have a definition. Um, and, and one of those elements to being an assault rifle is that it's able to go fully automatic. And so what's, what's the irony is here I am saying here are seven things you need to know in order to have a conversation about guns. And the first thing right off the bat, I get wrong. <laughs> yeah. So then I have to, you know, every time someone points it out, I'm like tail between my legs. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. That was really stupid. <laughs> now I'm ready to have that conversation. Um, and, uh, yeah, and the, the whole uh, silencer thing, um, it's basically like, you know, uh, you, you, you know, no matter how loud it is, you, you don't want to be firing it off in a library. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, okay, so you come from Queens. Yeah, you right? You know, if I, I, I got it right? I come from Queens. Okay, yeah. that's kind of frightening because you don't have an accent. So what the heck did you do? I mean, how did you silence this? Massive stroke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's crazy because um, a lot of people, you know, will try to lose their accents. I went to I went to NYU, and I had friends of mine from Oklahoma who were in the yeah. acting program, and they're like, I have to lose this. They're like, they have to lose this accent. And I'm like, I love your accent. It sounds so cool. Um, I heard a <laughs> I heard – a recording of my voice when I was 19 years old, and I sounded like a club promoter <laughs> who, you know, was about to get kicked out of his own club, you know, for, like, getting into a fight with a waitress. I, I sound, bro, I sounded terrible. I sounded terrible, bro. And I have <laughs> no idea how, how I was able to lose it. I, I, have, um, I have four brothers. If you hear them speak, it hurts so bad. <laughs> it hurts so badly. <laughs> the idea that the language that produced Shakespeare is coming out of their mouth. These mamalukes coming out of their mouths. It's terrible. This is not Jersey Shore or Working Girl. We're talking about the accent is just fun. Yeah. I spent four years in study teams at, 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 down at Georgetown University, and my entire study teams were made out of guys out of Long Island. It really warped me. Mm -hmm. You know, as a Southerner, it was a little frightening. I understood why they finally won the war. You know, we're still Wait, you're a Southerner? I, you know, we will have a comeback. But anyway, <laughs> we, the South will rise again, yeah, you don't bet, you? You bet. You know, Isn't that right, think. South California? Wait, wait, Southern California will rise again. You're from everywhere. You're from Germany. You're from the South. You're from, I, you, okay. Anyway, I, I'm sure there's a story there for a different day, and we'll, we'll tackle that topic. Right now. I, I, we'll have to take you out afterwards. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, but the, it is funny to me because you really have, t you've tackled this whole thing of humor with smart 
understanding. How did you get that at New York at New York U- University? Yeah. How did you do that there? Well, well, I started doing comedy at, at, at NYU, at New York University. So I started doing improv, and then I, uh, uh, I joined a sketch group called uh, Wicked Wicked Hammercats. And we eventually made the leap to the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. Wait, the Wicked Wicked Hammercats. Wicked Cats. Wicked Hammercats, K-A-T-Z. So, wow, oh, okay. Yeah. When we're talking Upright Citizens Brigade, now you're in the class act group. This is like Second City. Um, but better. It, I don't know. I'm not sure. I uh, think you're did. smarter. I mean, it I'm felt sorry. Sorry, guys from Chicago. I am sorry, but I, I really seriously. It, you it guys felt awesome. It, it felt awesome uh, being there. And we were we were there at a time in the theater where where so much amazing stuff was happening. And one of the things that that I look back on uh, about you know sort of my my comedy career and my growth was that I was able to to go to a theater where you were allowed to fail. And what I, what I mean by that is um, it not not in the sense that you could just keep doing bad shows and you'll get a run. No, 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 no. No, you had to work and get your shows and you had to hone your material. But you would go up and you would see people doing scenes, doing sketches, and you'd say, oh, man, I didn't know that was possible. I didn't know that, that we could do that. And and so I was very, very fortunate to, um, to start my training at NYU to have a director that, that I had, this guy named A.J. Morales, um, who was fantastic, and then – um, to have the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater be that um, um, that that chamber where, like, you know, oh, you know, we could make crazy stuff happen, and it was it was amazing. Okay, well, when we talk about here in LA, the Groundlings—they're known for all the improv and all the guys they pushed into SNL and everywhere else. I mean, they are very successful, but improv, NYU, you guys seem to come at it with a different kind of understanding. What is it? it did you really get into the political side, or what does comes out of there that makes you guys? different oh well I'm, I'm the only one who came out of nyu as far as like we the internet tv goes okay uh, yeah so um uh, yeah, nyu uh, y- you didn't create everyone okay <laughs> all right and also i'm self-made okay uh self-made bro <laughs> self-made bro totally self-made um i guess what when it comes down to you know uh, you know when we're doing comedy for me the funny is more important than uh than the message, I, I, I guess. And, th- and if something isn't working comedically or, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes it also comes down to I'm trying to figure this thing out. I'm trying to figure out uh, this topic and maybe I can help, you know, kind of like take people along for the ride. That, that's, that's the way that I, I look at it. I, I, I think anytime you're, you're, you know, you're stepping on, uh, you're towing the line between, you know, uh, entertainment and activism, you really got to be careful. You, you have to be really, really careful because people can sniff it out if you're trying to preach, you know, and, and nobody, uh, you know, if they're not paying a tithe, they don't want to hear you preaching. I think it's, it's I, I love that one, uh, particularly when you're listening to some of the smart humor on the TV shows or the night shows. Uh, there seems to be so many just kind of like a like a formula they're using now. And you can see the formula coming at you a mile away. Yeah, it's bad when you know what the punchline is. It, yeah, it's and, and that's. Or the predictability, like part of the part of the reason I loved Lady Gaga's Oscar speech, to have an artist say that there is a discipline to passion, and to have it be about the art and the passion and the story and the millions of kids that are looking at the Oscars, thinking someday I want to be an actress, I want to be able to get my Oscar, and showing that it is possible. It was the first time in years where I was. Not just thinking, I want to shut this off because they're going to make a political speech. I just thought know? we were watching Trump's or listening for Trump's tweets on it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, so, Cody, do do we have that hilarious video queued up? We can watch it. Now, we won't be able to watch it before this break. We're going to have to come back on the other side of the break, correct? Okay, great. So here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to take a short commercial break right now really fast. And we're going to come back with Lou Perez of We the Internet TV and play – the single video he is most proud of. This is hilarious stuff, uh, folks. <laughs> Don't touch that tile. Yeah. 
Every year, thousands of local children, teens, and adults receive treatment at the Child and Family Center for depression, anger, anxiety, abuse, thoughts of suicide, and drug and alcohol addictions. Our professional staff provides outpatient services at office locations, in the home, the community, and on many elementary, junior, and high school campuses throughout our valley. If you need help, Contact Child and Family Center at 259-9439 or childfamilycenter.org. Improving lives, one family at a time. Are you at least 55 and have a torn irreparable rotator cuff? If so, you may qualify for a no-cost clinical study of an investigational shoulder implant. Visit rotatorcuffstudy.com. Learn more about the study being conducted at Southern California Orthopedic Institute's Valencia Clinic at rotatorcuffstudy.com. See a video of the device and get more information on how to enroll at rotatorcuffstudy.com. That's rotatorcuffstudy.com, rotatorcuffstudy.com. Sponsored by MicroAir Surgical Instruments. Hey guys, this is Cardinellis, host of the new show Problem Solver Politics, an independent political talk show that keeps you up to date and in the know on the latest political happenings both nationally and here in the Santa Clarita Valley. Now this isn't your usual partisan political talk show. At Problem Solver Politics, we don't rant, we don't spew talking points. We have experts from all avenues talk about specific problems and how to solve them. And if your party is in the wrong, we will tell it to your face on air every Sunday at 7 p.m. <laughs> Hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. We are live in the KHTS studio. It is 7.43 here at AM 1220 and FM 98.1. I am your host, Cardinalis, with... Mark Murphy, who's really enjoying the stability of this political conversation. <laughs> yeah, because we're, like, laughing with the most hilarious <laughs> political comedian. Uh, you, called himself, you called yourself a messiah earlier. He's actually... Puts humor, the funny part, ahead of the political perspective. I love it. Okay, so we asked earlier what your favorite video is that you made, and you said... ESL students learn new gender pronouns, uh, available on YouTube. Okay, so we're actually going to play this, because from what he describes, it's pretty funny. This ain't going to get me in trouble, right? It, it might. Uh, <laughs> okay, Just blame right. it on the Democrats. Everybody else does. Uh, all right, so this is... I forgot the title. Cody, what is it? bring it back. What is it, Cody? What's the title again? ESL students yeah. learn new gender pronouns. All right, let's check this out. ESL students learning new gender pronouns. There is no sound. No sound? Are we experiencing technical difficulties? We are experiencing Cody? the dreaded technical difficulties. Give me one minute, guys. We'll get working. All right, all right. That's fine. Okay, so anyway, second favorite give us the second favorite of all your videos oh, we talked about the donald trump one which was hilarious talked about the wedding cake yeah we talked about the wedding i, cake. I think i think the, I, I think maybe my second favorite one i get to play a, a beloved character named sam patriot okay. who is a proponent of open carry uh meaning that he walks around town with okay a, yeah with a giant rifle um and it's uh titled your gun makes you look like a Think of a, a bad word that, <laughs> okay. that's kind of synonymous <laughs> with jerk. Um, that one is one of my is one of my favorites. So one of the early ones that I made for Leading the Internet TV. D okay, so what is what? I, I get uh, this is what blows my mind, and I, and I asked Andrew Heaton similar questions, but what made it so that you? They say that your spot in the entertainment industry, you don't find it, but it finds you. What made you settle into political humor? Well, it, it was uh, it was just a great opportunity that came my way, um, uh, getting to meet um, Lana Link, who is um, kind of like a talent coordinator for Leading Internet TV. They were looking to do sketch, and they were looking to do a political sketch. And I'm like, hey, you know what? I might as well give it a shot and see what happens. And uh, slowly but surely, I, I worked my way up to uh, head writer, and then from head writer, executive producer. And it's one thing I'll, I'll, I'll tell everyone. I had no idea that this was going to happen for me. I had no idea that I was going to be – a producer or a head writer or anything like that, but you take what life throws your way and you try to do the best you can with it. So just like Lady Gaga said, "There's discipline for passion." No. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot what she said. I didn't. I didn't catch the no, Oscars. Like I'm was, very sorry. That was really good. All right, so we're gonna take a quick peek right now at ESL students learn proper gender pronoun. I swim. You swim. We swim. Very 
good, everyone. Now, Farhad, do you swim? I swim. Everyone, Farhad swims, so he, he swims. swims. Pretty teacher in good. front of students. Now let's conjugate the verb to swim with the other pronouns. She, she swims. swims. They, they swim. swim. That makes sense. Zer swims. Z swims. Zai swims. <laughs> they look What's dumbfounded. Wrong? I don't understand. That's okay. I don't understand. And that's all right, Louise. So I is the first person pronoun used when you're referring to yourself. I swim. Correct. Yes, I understand I, but I don't understand what is that. <laughs> oh, they are all gender neutral pronouns. What does that mean? Gender neutral pronouns are what you use when you're referring to someone who doesn't want to be referred to by traditional masculine or feminine pronouns, like oh, wow. he or she. So not a boy, not a girl. That's right, Yuki. Is he gay? Uh, no. <laughs> well, not necessarily. My brother, he gay. Is he one of them? Do you know your brother's preferred pronouns? I don't know. My family not speak to me. Okay. Cultures are different. It's important when studying and practicing English that you stay sensitive to the pronouns of others. Not a boy, not a girl. Uh, that's a table, Farhad. It is a table. You see, the table didn't choose its gender. Objects can't do that. But people can. For example, what is Yuki? <laughs> girl? Well, maybe. We don't want to... Miss Gender Yuki. Yes, uh, I'm a girl. You could be. I <laughs> am. <laughs> yeah, but you could also be someone who was assigned female at birth, but now identifies as non-binary. So we would, in fact, use a gender-neutral pronoun for you. Like Z. What is a sign? Is homework? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> a sign is how you look on the outside. But how you feel on the inside? That is how we identify. I identify, Sven. Really, Farhad? I am confused. <laughs> you shouldn't be confused, Yuki. Sorry. It's this really not that hard, it. you guys. There's only 63 the pronouns. 63 on their faces. pronoun. Yes. And it's important before speaking to anyone that you ask, what is your preferred gender pronoun? I have to ask everyone that? Yes, <laughs> of course. Louise, what if you accidentally referred to a Z as a za? Wouldn't you be embarrassed? No. Of course <laughs> you would. You should be embarrassed. And you know what else? It's offensive, right? Right. And you want to be a gender ally, right? Right. You're not learning English to be a bigot, are you? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Louise gets it. Okay. So who is still confused? <laughs> Every the whole entire the swim. <laughs> the whole entire class is raising their hand. And see. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. Okay, how, did your cell phone blow up with hateful tweets about how you're just a big fat bigot that's anti, that's transphobic and everything after that? Well, it, it's it's funny because because um, well, that was hilarious. But I, to a certain extent, there's no alien from space that can't look at that law that they passed in New York saying that there's 23 gender pronouns and you have to build a bathroom for each individual one, or else you're guilty of a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar crime and you'll get fined and think this is absolute insanity and that teacher was literally that actress that you hired killed it oh um, uh, shelly chenoy she's fantastic this she's you're awesome. not learning english to become a bigot are you <laughs> you know that is literally the way people treat you nowadays if you make honest mistakes well well and and, and something i'll say like i w what's really fun is to get the comments that, that, that people say like look i'm trans and i thought this was hilarious or yeah. I'm non-binary, and yeah, yeah, you know what? You can just use they. That works. All these <laughs> other pronouns are a little nuts. We don't have to do that. So that's fun to be able to see that. You know, that, that was the funny thing. This seems to go through all of the lines, the bits that you do, and that is you really don't offend. Y you're, you're pointing out something. And I don't know. I can see how a bunch of people would get well, super offended by yeah. that, but I thought it was hilarious. But, but I don't care what – generally, I, do, I don't see the offensive side. There, there are times I'm listening to some other shows – and it's just flat out, you're pointing, you're digging it. Well, it didn't seem like you were going dumb. after. Yeah. No, you're not going after anybody. It wasn't ad hominem. It was against the, the, the insanity of the groupthink that has developed around this. Well, well, well the idea for this came from, um, you know, hearing about, you know, uh, non-binary pronouns and then having 
my father, who's, who's an immigrant from Argentina, uh, and imagining him coming you know, to the U.S. today with not knowing any English, mm. and then him having to be you know, being confronted by all of these you know, basically Tumblr non-binary pronouns, and just like, well, what does that look like? You know, and and one thing I would say is like this isn't a judgment call at all on you know on trans people or non-binary people. It's just taking this one element and this thinking like, oh, what would that be like? Dude, I usually don't at all read the comments, but these are really funny. Juan Pabon a month ago said the table didn't choose its get gender. Objects can't do that. Spanish, hold my beer. <laughs> so anybody that's learned another language knows that the gender pronouns of other languages are actually either masculine or feminine. And there are several languages that do have neutral. That's pretty funny. Um, this other guy <laughs> says, I'd rather memorize the 118 elements. Another guy <laughs> said, uh, Pikachu goddess. Apparently you got a big time Pokemon fan here saying that uh, my brother is gay got me in tears. And then this one was hilarious that I think we should start doing on this show. I identify as quadrisexual. My pronouns are your highness, our Lord, and his grace. <laughs> I, I think that would be totally awesome right there. So actually, I'm surprised. I'm not seeing a bunch of blowback here, but that's probably, of course, the Google algorithms only giving me the positive stuff. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But you're going to see the other later on. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's, it's just fun to me because you come out of New York City, which is a hotbed of all this kind of different different perspectives, versions. I mean, you did give us Trump. Um, so, you know, <laughs> he was, our, he's from Queens. Our, our esteemed well, president, our the honorary commander Actually, I got, I got, a, this is kind of actually important for me, and maybe this very is... very respectful. This is me probably just putting my personal bias onto a situation, but so many times I'll say something and I worry about how it can be misinterpreted because we get the angry letters, we get the angry blog posts, and, and there's so many times when you're working in radio where... You just think, is it even worth it? You know, is it even worth it because I know the crap that I'm going to get? And it's not necessarily out of fear. It's a, is it worth it? However, that can easily do that too many times. And you look at yourself saying, I'm not living my truth. You know what I'm saying? So did you get blowback from this? Oh, the, um, um, if you scroll through, I mean, there's like, I think, a uh, 1.3 million views like on on YouTube, and then I on it really did, it did really well on Facebook. It has like over three million views. So obviously, anything watched that many times is going to get you know uh, negative. But commentary. nobody came after you for well, any kind of like. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm not sure. Hate speech leads to violence. You know what I'm saying? And I, like I think that there might be there might be some of those uh, okay. some of those comments in there. But but one thing that I would say is you know when you are putting out stuff. Um, I am ready to talk about it, you know, so I'm ready to that if a person really, d you know, is offended by my video, you know, if they find a way to contact me either through, you know, info at we the internet dot TV or something like that, I'm, I have no problem. It's not even going out of my way to talk about it, because for one, I am so thankful that someone even watched it to begin yeah. with. <laughs> and that also it had, an Im you know, it made some kind of an impact that they wanted to reach out and and and. You know, tell me what they thought about it. Awesome. That is so good to hear because, uh, honestly, I really feel like – I feel like there was a big-time tipping point in the black community when Kanye West said, I like the way Candace Owens bangs. That's why I even made that little poster over there. Because – not because I think he was the first to embrace somebody that had conservative values. And she definitely wasn't the first black conservative, but it was really the first time – that one of the biggest black pop cultural icons was embracing it, and it was okay for those that were black conservatives to come out and say, I am. I, I think similar well, to— we should follow our wonderful entertainment people on everything that we do. Yeah. Because, hey, come on. They following do know celebrities' what's going opinions on. is always going to lead you sure. in the right direction. Well, also, similarly to how the gay community really liked— Oh, you're going to have to help me out with his name. He's more your generation— the guy you from mean he's old. Uh, yeah, well, the guy from the village George Washington. people. Oh, no, okay. the guy from the village people that was the first, uh, one of the first big celebrities to really be openly gay. I thought it was the entire village people. I thought that was uh, Rock Hudson. No, <laughs> well, <laughs> how yeah. far are we going back? No, but Ro Rock Hudson was closeted for a long time. I think for almost his entire career, it wasn't po until posthumously people knew he was uh, homosexual. No, right? I I watched his movies as a kid, and I yeah, and I you knew. just could tell. Okay, yeah, I could tell. come on, so I was in the military. You could tell those things if you're attracted to Rock Hudson. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> Rock Hudson is gay. So anyway, I, I liked – Sorry, Rock. I liked that moment because I viewed it as a tipping point in the black community where it's okay to embrace conservatism in the black community. 
And seeing something like this, I'm really starting to get a, a, a sense this year that the hyper critical and hypersensitivity that has been imposed upon my generation from the left mm. uh, is really finally starting to crack and that there's things getting through. Because two years ago, Blame I don't it think... on the left. I hear this all the time. Oh, come on. Political correctness is the poster child of the left. Well, you're right because, uh, you know, <laughs> we know everything. So it's <laughs> great. You know, we have all those great, great understandings of principles and philosophy. So therefore, we do need to teach you. Okay, so what is... Oh, man, I could talk to you all day, Lou. But we unfortunately have two more minutes left. What is the future of We The Internet TV? You guys are obviously growing. You're putting out hilarious content. This is better than the crap I see on SNL. What, what what's yeah. going on? Where are you guys the, headed? Give him the, some of the recent stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're uh, we are continuing to um, produce videos and put it out there. We're doing um, interview series um, with uh, like Dr. Deborah So that that, that, uh, we were that was intriguing. Thank you. We were talking about that earlier. Um, we're also looking to. We've been doing um, monthly uh, panel discussions where. You know, we touch upon uh, subjects, but, you know, I, I look at it again as, you know, I'm not an expert and uh, I love the opportunity to bring together people who are smarter than I am and funnier than I am and, and just pick their brain for an hour and let's go over, um, you know, topics that, that, that are important and, uh, and mean something to people. Uh, we're doing that. Uh, we're looking to be doing, uh, you know, limited series, you know, more like narrative stuff and also, um, you know, something to uh, keep an eye out for. We're actually going to be producing a feature length film. Uh, Whoa. So, yeah, so that's a, that's a big. Like the feature length version of ESL students learning gender pronouns? Yeah. Are you also going to do like teaching them? This is like Robin Williams in Good Morning <laughs> Vietnam. Well, well, yeah, well, actually, it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be a spinoff where Luis actually tracks down his gay brother um, <laughs> finally, and we find out what, <laughs> what happened, and now he gets to, you know, to speak English to him. Um, but, but yeah, we're, we're going to be doing a feature film unrelated uh, to that. So you know, a lot of a lot of big stuff happened. We're actually gonna, um, producing a documentary um, about free speech as well. Um, that's Great. Gonna be, that's going to be coming out, premiering uh, in April, April 25th. And I'm hoping to uh, we have like a, a little tour planned as well, going around the country. Because a at the end of the day, really, you know, what's most important is um, the ability to express our ideas, to put it out there to foster conversation and to keep people talking. Um, and I'm hoping that our videos can help bring people together. All right, so guys, this Kumbaya. has been an incredible show. You have been listening to Lou Perez, who is the curator, the executive director, the everything awesome of We The Internet TV. Make sure you check it out, click on it, subscribe. If you want to send them hate mail and criticisms, it's info at We The Internet TV. No, he doesn't need it. There <laughs> isn't any. You've been listening to Problem Solver Politics. It's 7.59. Check us out next week. See you guys later.